Now let's come to that point of this offseason where free agency is over and for the most part teams are set for next season and a lot of people have been ranking teams projecting how players are going to perform projecting how teams are going to perform next year and i've seen a lot of sports shows rank the best duos in the league the best backcourts in the league but i've never seen someone rank the best front courts in the league coming into next season so that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna rank the best front courts coming into next season. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So make sure you press that subscribe button if you haven't already, turn on those post notifications and let's get right into this video. Coming in at number 30, I have the Charlotte Hornets and their front court going into this season is Marvin Williams and Cody Zeller. Yeah, there's not much explaining to do there. Marvin Williams and Cody Zeller are two players that would barely get any minutes on a championship contending team, and they easily come in at number 30. Now coming in at number 29, I have the Clippers with Avita Zubac and Jermichael Green. Now I'm doing this based off of starting front courts. Now obviously they have Montrez Harrell. Right now they're gonna start Avita Zubac and Jermichael Green. Yes, if they had Montrez Harrell in here, it would be a whole nother story. That's not an above average starting front court by any means. So for that reason, they come in here at number 29. Coming in at number 28, I have the Wizards with Thomas Bryan and Mo Wagner. I say in a couple years, this starting front court can maybe be at number 20 or number 19. Thomas Bryan and Mo Wagner are two unproven players who have a lot of potential. So right now, I put the Wizards at number 28. Coming in at number 27, I have the Miami Heat with Kelly Olynyk and Bam Adebayo. Now Kelly Olynyk averaged 10 points, 5 rebounds for the Heat last year solid but barely above average you know and bam Adebayo is someone that heat fans and a lot of people are very high on but he has yet to prove himself so i think this is just a notch like a little notch above the wizards with thomas Bryan and mo wagner kelly olenek is a more proven role player than both of those players so that's why they come in here at number 27. now at number 26 i have the portland trailblazers with zach collins and hassan whiteside now the tier ahead of the last four teams i mentioned starts right here hassan whiteside has proven that he's a very good player in this league but last year, in the past couple of years, he's had some problems with the Miami Heat organization, and he hasn't proved that he could still do what he's been doing the past couple of years. And also, Zach Collins is also not a proven player in this league yet. And this is still not a bad front court, but I just think the 25 teams ahead of them are definitely better than what ranks here at number 26. Coming in at number 25, I have a surprising one with Zion Williamson and Jackson Hayes. Now, the only reason I have them so far down is because Zion and Jackson Hayes haven't played one second in the NBA yet. Yes, Zion is supposed to be the next LeBron, the next Charles Barkley, the next Larry Johnson, the next big thing in the NBA, but he hasn't played one second of NBA basketball yet. So I cannot rank him any higher than right here. Same goes with Jackson Hayes. You know, he had a tremendous summer league, but again, he hasn't played one second of NBA basketball yet. So they come here at number 25. Coming in at number 24 out of the Sacramento Kings with Dwayne Dedman and Marvin Bag. Marvin Bagley was definitely one of the most underrated rookies last year, putting up 15 points per game and 7 rebounds. And Dwayne Dedman has proven that he's a pretty solid stretch 5 in this league. But again, not the best front court in this league. I think Marvin Bagley still has a lot to prove in the NBA and he has a lot of potential. But just talent wise, not so amazing but not so bad. So I think they rank here perfectly at number 24. Next, I have the Atlanta Hawks with John Collins and Alex Len. John Collins had a tremendous year last year and it's proven that he's one of the top 12, maybe 13 best power forwards in this league. But his other running mate in the front court, Alex Len, has yet to prove that he's anything special in this league and he's a decent role player at best. And John Collins has yet to come into his full potential. But since John Collins put up 20 points and 11 rebounds last year, they rank in here at number 23. At number 22, I have the New York Knicks with Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson. Now, Julius Randle, beast year last year in New Orleans, putting up 21 points and nine rebounds. And Mitchell Robinson last year showed a lot, a lot of flashes, and I'm very high on him as an all around basketball player. He had a game last year where he put up 19 points and 21 rebounds. That's pretty insane if you ask me for a rookie. As you can see, he is very raw, he's very skinny, and he's yet to come into his own and has a lot of potential in the sleeve. But since Julius Randle is a proven player and is more polished than John Collins and pretty much any of the players that I've mentioned before him, they come in here at number 22. Now at number 21, I have the Phoenix Suns with DeAndre Ayton and Dario Sarge. 
Now, I think they rank here perfectly because, you know, Dario Sarge on the 76ers in 2017 had some games where he put up 32 points, 36 points, 34 points. And when Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid were out, he really came into his own, played very well, and I think he could do that on the Suns. DeAndre and also had a phenomenal rookie season. It's just being faded to the side a little bit because of all the other tremendous rookies that came out last year. Coming in at number 20, I have the Pacers with Demonis Sabonis and Miles Turner. Sabonis was in the running for sixth man of the year last year, and I think he could definitely be a great starting power forward for the Pacers this year. With Victor Oladipo coming back, that'll give him a lot of more opportunities. Same goes for Miles Turner. You know, he's yet to come into his full potential. I was looking for him to take like a full step last year. I think he took like a half step. I think this is the year that Miles Turner is going to really come into his own and be a tremendous player in this league. So I have the Pacers coming in at number 20. At number 19 comes the Brooklyn Nets with Jared Allen and DeAndre Jordan. Now it hasn't been clarified who's exactly starting for this Nets team, but I just took the two best big men on that team and I'm supposing that this is going to be the starting front court coming into next season. Now DeAndre Jordan has proven that he's someone that takes out the trash, does the dirty work in the paint. And he's been a proven 11 and 11 type guy. You know, he gets you 10 points, 12 rebounds, 11 points, 13 rebounds, something along those lines. And Jared Allen had a tremendous, tremendous year last year. And this year, I really think he'll benefit from Kyrie Irving coming in and giving him that ball a little bit more and facilitating. So I think the Nets rank here perfectly at number 19. And they might have the most all-around front court that I've listed so far. Now coming in at number 18, I have the Bulls with Lowry Markin and Wendell Carter Jr. Now I know a lot of you guys might not agree with this one. I just really think Lowry Markin is majorly underrated. He put up 20 points a game last year, and he's just so talented on the court. I watched him play a lot last year, and I can just see his raw talent that he has. And Wendell Carter Jr., I don't think he had as bad of a rookie season as people think he had. And he definitely played good. I, I think this front court can definitely come into its own next year. And they can definitely push the Bulls to maybe an 8th seed in the East. At 17, I have the Cavs with Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson. And now if both of these players are both fully healthy, they definitely rank in here at number 17. The last time Kevin Love was the first option on his team, he put up 26 points and 12 rebounds. Yes, age has hit him a little bit. And yes, he's slowing down as a player. But Kevin Love still has a lot left in this league and he still has a lot left to prove so I think next year will be a big year for him. Same goes for Tristan Thompson. Coming in at number 16 I have the Grizzlies with Jaron Jackson Jr. and Jonas Valanciunas. Jaron Jackson Jr. was another one of those players who had a very underrated rookie year last season. Jonas Valanciunas is something that puts up 16 points and 10 rebounds. You know last year with the Grizzlies he was playing really well and he had a span of games where he was putting up 25 and 12, 23 and 13. And I think next year he could definitely do that with John Morant coming in and he'll be the veteran that the Grizzlies go to in the clutch. So at number 15, I have the Rockets with Clint Capella and P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker is the definition of a stretch 3 and D player. He's a power forward, but he can shoot threes, and he's one of the most aggressive hustlers in the NBA. And every championship team needs a player like him on your team. And Clint Capella, we know what he's capable of, so I think the Rockets rank here perfectly at number 15. The Boston Celtics are ranked here at number 14 with Jason Tatum and Anis Kander. Now, we don't really know what the Celtics rotation will look like next year. Will they put Gordon Hayward off the bench? Because if that's the case, Jason Tatum will not be playing the power forward position. But in this video, I will say that you can argue what you think it is. No one knows yet until the NBA season starts. But for this video, I'm just gonna say that Jason Tatum is gonna play the power forward position. Yes, he had a little bit of a sophomore slump last year. He still improved numbers wise, from his rookie season. I think he'll take a huge step here now that Kyrie is out and there's not a lot of drama going around in Boston. He's really gonna come into his own. Ennis Kanter showed what he's capable of last year and you can argue that this team should be ranked a little lower. I think this team can really do some damage in the East next year. Now at number 13, I have a very controversial one. I have the Mavericks with Chris Dabbs Porzingis and Dwight Powell. On the Knicks in his second year in the NBA, he put up 23 points a game and 10 rebounds. Kristaps Porzingis is a superstar in the NBA, you can't say anything about it. So if Kristaps Porzingis comes back and plays like he did in his sophomore season, the Mavericks definitely deserve to be ranked here. Dwight Powell is holding them down a little bit, but he did put up 10 points and 5 rebounds last year, which is solid enough. Now coming in at number 12, I have the Spurs with LaMarcus Aldridge and Jakob Pertl. 
Lamarcus has proven that he's an all-star caliber player in this league. And a front court that has an all-star is very rare in the NBA right now. So the Spurs definitely deserve to be ranked here number 12. And Jakob Pertl is also a young player who has some potential in this league. Now here's where things start to get a little bit spicy. At number 11, I have the Warriors with Willie Cauley-Stein and Draymond Green. Now last year with the Kings, he put up 12 points and 8 rebounds. In playing that starting center position with the Warriors, he can definitely do some damage in this league. Draymond Green has proven that he's an all-around player, and to me, you can consider him the best all-around player in this league. At number 10, I think this Thunder front court ranks just above the Warriors at number 11, with Steven Adams and Danilo Gallinari. Gallinari is a very solid three-point shooter, and he does a lot of damage in the post. He's a great scorer, and he knows how to get the job done as a power forward. And Steven Adams next year, I really think he can come into his own and be like an Andre Drummond type player, be someone who averages, you know, 15 rebounds, maybe 13 points. And I think, you know, being the veteran on that team, being the longest tenured Thunder, Billy Donovan is used to Steven Adams being there, and he's the only one that's still there after this whole chaos that went down in OKC. He's going to come into his own, play very well, as well as Gallinari. Now, at number nine, I have the Orlando Magic, and I think they're one of the most underrated front courts in this league with Nikola Vucevic and Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon has yet to come into his own. He's still someone that puts up 17 points and nine rebounds for you. Vucevic was a first time All Star last year, and his prime started last year. And usually, the core of a player's prime is their second or third year in their prime. So this year, Lucevic is going to put up numbers like 23 points and 13 rebounds. And I think someone who performs like that, you have to put him in the top 10. With that said, coming in at number 8, I have the Minnesota Timberwolves with Carl Anthony Towns and Robert Covington. You'll hear it here first. Carl Anthony Towns is one of the most underrated players we have in this league. He put up 24 points and 12 rebounds, and he's someone that you can definitely build a team around. Now, they also got Robert Cummington in there, who's one of the most dynamic 3 and D players in this league. Now, at number 7, I have the Toronto Raptors with Pascal Siakam and Marc Gasol. There's not a lot of explaining to do here. I think Siakam as the first option on our team will strive, and we know what we get from Marc Gasol. Once upon a time, he was a defensive player of the year, and Pascal Siakam will only get better with that first option. Now at number 6, I have the Utah Jazz with Bogdan Bogdanovich and Rudy Gobert. Now this one is definitely controversial, but I just think there's too much talent in this front court to be rated lower on this list. We have Rudy Gobert, who averaged 13 points and 16 rebounds, and won Defensive Player of the Year this year. He's just an all-around freak of nature in the paint, and he's just a beast on both sides of the court, one of the best centers we have in this league. With Bogdan Bogdanovich, he put up 18.3 points per game last year with the Indiana Pacers. Not a lot of players can do that in this league. So if you have two players who are that good at what they do in the front court, you can't pass up. Now entering the top five, at number five, I have the Los Angeles Lakers with Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. Anthony Davis is the best power forward in this league. DeMarcus Cousins did not come back nearly the same after his Achilles injury. And I think for the rest of his career, he's going to put up numbers, you know, like 14.7 rebounds and stuff along those lines. To be the best front court in this league, you need to have an all-around amazing team with a superstar power forward and a superstar center. Right now, the Lakers just aren't it. Coming in at number four, I have the Denver Nuggets with Nikola Jogic and Paul Millsap. Starting off with Paul Millsap, he was an all-star a couple of years ago, and he's still capable of putting up 17 points or 18 points per game, and he's a true power forward in this league. And Nikola Jokic, you can literally argue that he's the most skilled basketball player in the league today. He can do it all, and the way he just goes about playing his game is just crazy, and he's just such a superb center in this league. This is why I think the Nuggets rank here at number four. Now at number three, I have the Milwaukee Bucks with Giannis Antetokounmpo and Brooke Lopez. Giannis won MVP, and he's proven that he's a superstar, and he's proven that you can argue that he's the best player in the whole NBA. Brooke Lopez was an all-star with the Nets too, and he put up 20 points per game as the first scoring option for a team. Obviously, he's not going to be the first scoring option for the Bucks, but he's still someone that can hit that three and can do it all as a center. Maybe not run, but like, he could get the rest of the job done for you. So I think just having Giannis there at that power forward position, you can't pass up on him and you cannot put this Bucks front court any lower than they are right now. At number two is between the Pistons or the 76ers. And I just happen to put the Pistons here at number two. They have the best 
all-around front court in this league with Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond. Two studs and two all-stars. Blake Griffin put up 26 points per game last year, and that's just superb numbers. Andre Drummond also put up 17 points and 13 rebounds. Those are very amazing numbers. Both of them haven't even gotten past the third round of the playoffs, and them together hasn't gotten the Pistons anywhere. So that's why I think the 76ers come in at number one with Joel Embiid and Al Horford. And you take the Joel Embiid stopper and put him on Joel Embiid's team, I don't know how much better you can get than that. Anyways guys, that'll do it for this video. Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I read every comment, so I want to see what you guys have to say. I'll see you guys in the next one, and stay tuned for more videos like this. Peace out.